I've got three SQL IEMs here today, meaning that each of them is a follow-up on another IEM, and in this case, all three previous IEMs were very successful and very popular. Specifically, what I'm referring to is the KiwiEars Orchestra Lite, I've got the C-Audio Yuma 2, and I've also got the Moondrop Audio Blessing 3. All three of these, as I said, have some heritage behind them with their previous models. In this case, we're talking about three IEMs coming from $200 up to $320. US So they're all in that sort of still affordable, kind of not quite budget audio, but also not getting into your really expensive $500, $600 territory for IEMs. And with the rapid progress of all these IEM brands coming out of China, I was really keen to see how well they stacked up against each other and any other favorites I've got in this sort of price category. Okay. Yeah. I got floaters in my eyeball, coasters by the shot glass, smoking let my mind fall, plenty of roaches, no ass, stepping on no critters, jitters going through my spine, should be used to a state of a poor man's mind, it's just PB no J, huh? Kool-Aid, no sugar, oil in the bath, water for warm showers in winter, work cooking, she clean, mama was a magician, she switched it and turned the tub to a washing machine, air drying the clothes, hanging up with my woes, enemies was my friend of me, laughing about all my lows. But it's on Greet me with a hay and a wave with a real at These fishermen lines and catch them trying to bring the real back Guess it's time to bring the real back Feel that vibe in the air Fingers are snapping I am a sinner set the saints to the I've chosen these in no particular order and I happen to have ended up with the Moondrop Blessing 3 coming up first. This is a 320 US dollar IEM and it's coming courtesy of Appos Audio. The Moondrop Blessing 3 has two dynamic drivers and four balanced armatures per shell, but those two dynamic drivers are kind of working as a single dynamic driver, as I'll explain in a moment. Before I get to the technicalities of the design, let's talk about the physical, aesthetics and accessories. And I'd say that the Blessing 3 is a very striking and beautiful looking IEM. It's got this lovely shiny stainless steel or whatever metal it is faceplate, I think they said it's stainless steel in the marketing. And then behind that you've got a clear acrylic shell housing those four balanced armatures and two dynamic drivers as I just mentioned. Attached to that we've got a two pin cable, and this is probably the one area that I feel like the Blessing 3 is kind of a letdown at $320. US This cable feels pretty cheap, not so much the, the main body of the cable and the 3.5mm plug, they're okay, but these connectors at the top are very, very cheap. I'd expect to see these on a $10 or $20 IEM, not a $320 IEM. Maybe coincidentally, I'm not sure, but I've found as I use these and as, as I've kind of played around with them for photography and stuff, that the actual connector at the top just falls out very, very easily. I wouldn't say it's loose as such, but there's just very little grip. And I don't know if that's an issue with the sockets inside the IEM or the cable or a combination of both, but for $320, as I said, I'd expect a bit more from the Moondrop Blessing 3. In addition to the cable, you're also getting a fairly standard case and fairly standard tips. There's nothing to write home about here. But thankfully, as we start to get into the actual technicalities and the body of the IEM, that's where things do get a bit better. And probably the key thing is just how well put together all the components are here. The two dynamic drivers that I mentioned before are set up in an opposing system, meaning that what they're basically doing is both dynamic drivers fire into the same cavity and they're going to create pressure in that cavity together. Now what that means is that each of the individual drivers can be driven a bit less. It doesn't have to have as big of an excursion. Each of the drivers doesn't need to be pushed to its limit in order to get a decent amount of base. So theoretically, that means the drivers should be breaking up less. Breakup of the drivers being when the diaphragm itself starts to flex and no longer maintain the shape that it should. And so by doing that, you should be getting cleaner and smoother sound out of those base drivers. Beyond that, we've then got different ports feeding the bass, the mid and the treble from the various drivers up into the ear canal through the nozzle there, and that's not that uncommon. This is something you see quite often. Moondrop have kind of called it out a bit in their marketing, but don't be fooled into thinking it's new and somehow innovative. It's actually very, very standard. So I think the Moondrop Blessing 3 looks lovely. I think the technology going into there makes sense from a theoretical point of view, but as always, the proof's in the pudding and how it sounds. And how I describe the sound of the Blessing 3 is very smooth, but very detailed. The sound's very clean, very articulate, but never sharp or never bright. Now I should point out as you look at the graph on screen that the graph I've produced here looks quite different from the graph produced by Moondrop. And I went back and I re-measured these multiple times, and all I can put it down to is the fact that they're using a compensation curve for their graph that's very different to what I'm using. 
the compensation curve that I use means that if you do get an IEM that measures exactly flat at about that 80 decibel mark or wherever it measures, if it measures flat is the key, a flat line on the charts from my system should equate to a sound that is pretty much dead neutral. In other words, like a perfect set of studio monitors playing in a perfectly treated room. So you can see there that the Blessing 3 is not a dead neutral IEM, not that I'm suggesting any IEM should be, they'd be pretty dull and boring to listen to potentially. But the key point is, what I hear from the Blessing 3 is mirrored by what I see on the graph. So even though it's very different to what's shown in the marketing from Moondrop, don't feel like one is correct and the other is incorrect. It's all about the compensation curves applied, and the good news is that based on my familiarity with my system, what you're seeing on screen is representative of how they sound, and therefore when we get to some comparisons, it'll start to make sense how these are similar and different from the others I'm talking about. Moving on from the graph though, and the bass from the Moondrop Blessing 3 is really interesting. It's not particularly present or full, it's not enhanced in any way, but there's a lovely sense of punch to it, an excellent extension. So it's not exactly prominent bass, but it's very well delivered, very solid bass for the level that it's working at. Continuing on from that, and the fact that the bass is not emphasised, what is emphasised from the Blessing 3 is the mid-range and the treble, but it's done very, very tastefully. So what you're getting with the Blessing 3 is a very mid-range focused IEM, a little bit treble focused as well, but very tastefully done and very smoothly delivered. For their price, I'd say their imaging and staging is excellent. They produce a lovely focused image, a good sense of overall space, and they're just really enjoyable to listen to. Because I'm working through a few IEMs in this review, what I'm going to do is continue using the same two tracks throughout this review, and the first track I tried out was I Wish I Could Go Travelling Again by Stacey Kent. Listening to this track on The Blessing 3, and the vocals were wonderfully focused and clear and detailed. The guitar here is articulate, but also with a good sense of resonance. Yes, there's the vibration of the strings, you can hear the fingers moving on the strings, plucking the strings or strumming the strings, but you should also be able to hear the resonance of the guitar body itself, and you can do that with the Blessing 3. The guitar and the vocal is very nicely separated, you can hear where they are in space, you can hear that they're clearly different sounds, there's no muddying of them at all. And then when the whole band joins in here as well, everything's still very well separated by the Blessing 3s. I describe the sound from these overall as light and delicate. They're not completely lacking body or that resonance that I mentioned before, but I would say they don't sound quite as full-bodied as they probably should if you were listening to the music live. And that's always my reference point, is does a headphone or an earphone sound like I'd expect it to sound if I was sitting in the room with the musicians? And with the Blessing 3, I'd say no, it doesn't. It doesn't make them unenjoyable or unpleasant in any way. It's not distracting. But if I really stop and think about it, they're lacking just a bit of body and a bit of emphasis that I do think it needs to sound completely natural. If we move on to a very different track in The Handler by Muse, I was actually quite surprised that after coming from the fairly delicate sound that I described when listening to the previous track, on The Handler, the Blessing 3's had a surprising amount of bass punch and impact when needed. At the other end of things, there's also the great control over the snare. These have that treble emphasis that I mentioned before, but they're not ever harsh. They manage to keep it very smooth and very refined. Once again, the vocal is clean and very well focused and separated in the mix. But I would say that I feel like these are being a little bit too polite. A track like The Handler should have some energy and some drive and not I wouldn't go so far as saying aggression behind it because no one wants to listen to an aggressive sound, but I just feel like they're lacking a bit of force and a bit of energy for music like this. They're a very polite IEM and that's going to suit some people really, really well, but if you're into genres like rock and blues and funk, faster jazz, electronic music, you may find these just a little bit too polite. And so where I'll pause now on the Blessing 3 is that I think they're a great IEM if you're looking for a vocal focus, if you want something that's very refined, very easy to listen to, but bringing you more in touch with the vocals and the upper end of the music, these are brilliant. And they do it without losing too much in the bass. But that also means they're just a little bit polite, they're a bit overly refined sometimes, I think. And so it does depend on what you're looking for. So let's pause there and we'll come back around to them in a little while, but first let's take a look at the Kiwi's Orchestra Lite. If you're trying to work out what piece of gear you should buy next, then the Passion for Sounds Recommends database might be helpful for you. In the description box of every single video, just down here, you'll find the Passion for Sounds Recommends section. If you click on this link, it'll take you through to the Passion for Sounds Recommends Airtable database. What you'll see in here is every single product that I've ever reviewed and recommend, in some cases products that I own but maybe haven't reviewed but recommend. 
And then once you're in here, you can use the filter button up here to decide to filter by things like whether or not the product type is for a headphone, for example. So maybe you're looking for a headphone, filter it by that, and you can now see every headphone I recommend. You can sort it by price, which is the default sorting, or any other sorting method that you want. And then once you've got the list of products you're looking for, you've got the links to the reviews of the products, and then also purchasing links for global retailers and also regional retailers for the US, Australia, Canada, and the UK. So feel free to play around with this, sort it, filter it however you want to. It won't affect what anybody else sees and you can hopefully find just the right products for you. I hope this is helpful and now let's get back to the review. The Kiwi is Orchestra Light come in at 249 US dollars and these were sent across by Linsol, so thank you to Linsol for sending these through. And the Orchestra Light is essentially a successor to the original Orchestra. The original orchestra used exactly the same design, but was a more expensive IEM. And so the whole idea of the orchestra light was to deliver very similar performance, tuning and sound, but at a cheaper price. Now, while we're talking about that, I'm going to straight away cover off the fact that I don't have the original orchestra here before. It's an IEM that I liked, but didn't quite love. That doesn't tell you anything about these yet, because they could be quite different. What I will say, though, is that the tuning is quite similar. They're using different drivers though, which means the character of the sound is going to be different, but the overall frequency response isn't far off. So if you'd tried the orchestra, or you'd worked out that the orchestra was a good fit for your tastes, these could be a good choice if they're going to deliver on good sound quality, because you're paying a lot less and you're getting very similar tuning. Just to quickly talk about design and aesthetics, what we've got with the Orchestra Light is again an 8 balanced armature design. They're housed in beautiful acrylic housings. We've just got a simple coloured faceplate on these. I think there's two different colours available. I've got the blue ones here. So you've got a coloured faceplate with the Kiwi Ears logo, and then you've got again another clear acrylic shell behind, so you can see through to the balanced armatures. You can actually see the crossover on the side. It's pretty cool seeing everything so easily here. And then with the Kiwi Ears Orchestra Light, you're getting a much better cable in my opinion. It's not like it's vastly different, it's a very similar looking design, but there's a little bit more wire going on. So you've got an extra pair of wires per earphone. In the case of the Blessing 3, it was just a twin braid wire or a twisted wire actually, whereas in this one you've actually got a four wire braid going on. And what that actually means is you've got more cores carrying the signal, you've got more surface area, more massive wire, and that may or may not lead to better sound, but what it definitely leads to is a better feel, a more sturdy feeling cable, but the thing that I like most of all is the fact that the connectors at the top feel much more secure and much more high quality. Beyond that, we've got an okay case, but we've got nice tips as well. So it's a good package overall for a $250 IEM. What you're getting with the Orchestra Light is actually very good, I think. I've already mentioned that there's eight balanced armatures doing the work inside here. And again, you can see all the goings on. And you can also see once again that these do have those separated sound tubes too. So as I said before, it's not unique to the Blessing 3. The same exact thing is happening here. And indeed with almost any multi-driver IEM. When we get to the sound of the orchestra light, I would describe it as a clean and detailed sound once again. These come across a bit breathier than the Blessing 3, and what I mean by that is that they've got a bit more emphasis in certain treble frequencies that just brings a little bit more of that breath, that air, that higher frequency sort of texture to the sound. But at the same time, their emphasis at the higher registers does make them a little bit drier to listen to. One of the things I really like about the Blessing 3 is just how easy they are to listen to. They're detailed, they're upper end focused, so mid-range through treble focused, but they're very relaxed and easy to listen to. In the case of the Orchestra Light, they're not harsh, they're not difficult to listen to, but they are drier. They're a bit less kind of relaxing, I'd say, than the Blessing 3. I feel like the bass presence from the Orchestra Light is quite good, but it was very evident that they don't have the punch. There's a certain tactility to the bass from the Blessing 3 that the Kiwi Ears Orchestra Light can't quite match. And that's not uncommon. When we put a dynamic driver up against a balanced armature, you'll often get that. And I'm assuming here it's coming down to the movement of air and also the decay of the drivers. So what I mean by that is that it feels like somehow the dynamic driver setup, that dual facing dynamic driver setup in the Blessing 3 is actually pushing more air through so you can almost feel it more. So the frequencies are still there, the vibrations are still there from the balanced armatures in the orchestra light, but you don't get that tactile sense of, of movement going on. Another part of that, or perhaps the only part of that, could also be the decay. Balanced armatures are generally a very fast driver, and so what you'll get is the sound hits and disappears really quickly. In the case of the dynamic drivers in a Blessing 3 or another earphone potentially, what you can get with a dynamic driver is that because the dynamic driver tends to hit the note and then it might bounce back and forth a little bit, 
they do tend to let the sound linger a bit more and that can give it a bit more presence and a bit more body. So either of those could be what's going on in the case of the Blessing 3. It might be a combination of both. But the end result is that despite measuring quite similarly, I do feel like you can actually feel the bass more from the Blessing 3 than you can from the Orchestra Light. And I'll give the nod to the Blessing 3s on bass quality for that reason alone. Going back again to those test tracks I mentioned before, so I wish I could go traveling and then the handle by Muse. Starting off on I wish I could go traveling, I feel like the separation was still very, very good from the Orchestra Light for the price, but not as strong as the Blessing 3. The tonality from the Orchestra Light comes across a bit brighter. And it's not so much that there's more emphasis in the upper end, I think so much as the fact that it's just a little bit less refined. There's a little bit more harshness from the sound, and we're talking comparatively. These are not a harsh sounding IEM in the Orchestra Light, but the Blessing 3 just is so refined and so controlled that in comparison, these come across a bit brighter and a little tiny bit edgier. I feel like for me and my ears, the Orchestra Light puts just a little bit too much emphasis on some of the cymbal work in I Wish I Could Go Travelling. And I don't mean there's some cymbal swells where they're hitting the cymbal with a soft mallet of some sort. I'm talking more about the hard drumstick hits on the cymbals. They're just a bit over-enhanced with the Orchestra Light. It gets a little bit harsh and a little bit distracting at times. Much like with the Blessing 3, I feel like the Orchestra Light lacks a bit of body and weight when the whole band kicks in. And so again, it's one of those situations where they sound lovely, they sound good, but they don't sound like I'd expect it to sound if you were in the room with the musicians. Moving over to the handler, and you can probably already guess what I'm going to say here, on a bigger track like this with more bass, more energy, more force, the orchestra light does come across just a little bit lightweight. It's lacking that tactility in the bass that the Blessing 3's had. Again, I still think the Blessing 3 lacked bass overall, but at least you could feel what was there. The lack of feeling and tactility in the bass from the orchestra light does hold them back a bit on tracks like the handler. I do feel like the vocal was well focused and very clear. But in comparison to the Blessing 3, the vocals from the Orchestra Light did start to get just a little bit edgy, and I didn't get that from the Blessing 3 at all. The Orchestra Light controls the snare well, so it's not as though they're really harsh or really nasty. It's just certain frequencies are a little bit more obvious, maybe a little bit less refined from the Orchestra Light, and that's where the Blessing 3 does probably justify its extra $70 price tag. Again, I feel like the separation is good from the Orchestra Light, but not quite as good as the Blessing 3. And so to sum it all up, I'd say that just like the Blessing 3, I feel like the Orchestra Light does lack a little bit of the energy and the presence and the force that is needed for genres like rock and blues and funk and anything where you want that bit of drive and rhythm and energy. But at the same time, it's a lovely sounding IEM. I would happily listen to this or the Blessing 3, and we'll get to the Yuma 2 in a moment, but I kind of see the Orchestra Light and the Blessing 3 as two IEMs in the same mould. So in general, what I'd say is if you're looking for an IEM that is a mid-range and treble-focused sound, not completely lacking in bass, but also a little bit kind of recessed in the bass to focus you in on the mids and the treble, then the Orchestra Light at $250 US is a good choice. But I think if you've got the extra $70 to spend, then the Blessing 3 is just a little bit better. It's kind of doing everything the Orchestra Light does, but just refining it giving you a bit more tactility in the bass, giving you a bit more separation and clarity in the sound, and keeping it smoother and just generally more enjoyable across the board. And so both are excellent, but also very similar. So now let's turn to the C Audio Yuma 2 and see if it continues the trend or if it does something a bit different. I have to admit that when I was sent the Yuma 2, and I should say thank you to start with to um, Andy from Melbourne Tri-Fi Audio for sending these out, when I was sent the Yuma 2s, I was a little bit uninspired, and that's because I did review the original Yuma, I was unimpressed, they had the similar sort of tuning, but I don't think as well executed as the other two that I've just talked about, and that meant that they really dropped away rapidly in the bass, far more than these other two, and were very much a mid-range and treble-focused IEM that did that nicely, but it just brought them undone across too many genres for me to really enjoy them. With the Yuma 2 here, we're coming in at $200, US so they're the cheapest IEM of the three I've got here. And from the moment you take them out of the box, you can see that things are being done differently. What I mean by that is we've got these lovely metal shells. So this is a metal faceplate and a metal shell. We've got another fairly basic cable. So the cable is probably, in terms of the feel of it and the look of it, about on par with the one from the Blessing 3, but they do have better connectors. So I think it is overall a better cable on the Yuma 2 compared to the Blessing 3. 
And given that this is a $200 IEM compared to a $320 IEM, I think you're getting better value for money with these accessories. Something else that I noticed is that these are a very, very compact IEM compared to the other two. So you've got quite a shallow shell here compared to a fairly bulky shell on the other two. I didn't find any of them uncomfortable. In fact, they're all very comfortable. But if you've got smaller ears, the Yuma 2 is going to be better in that regard. On the inside of each of these, we've got a single dynamic driver and a pair of balanced armatures. So we're kind of similar-ish to the Blessing 3, but less drivers overall, of course. And then the final thing I should mention, talking about accessories, I've mentioned the cable. The other thing is that you get a really nice set of tips with the Yuma 2. And I always think tips are probably the things I most value in an IEM. I've got a collection of different tips from different sort of aftermarket brands, but I always appreciate getting a good set of tips with an IEM because if it's the first IEM you've bought or maybe the most expensive one you've bought, you want a good set of tips to make the most of it. The tips you use with an IEM can absolutely make or break the sound. And so getting a good set of tips and a good range of tips means you're more likely to be able to get the best possible sound. So I was really happy to see that from the Yuma 2, and that did set me off wondering if these were going to be any better than the originals. They had a lot going for them. I love the look and the feel of the actual shells and the, the face plates themselves. The accessory set was good. And then the other thing that was really interesting was the moment I put them in, they also sounded really different too. The sound from the Yuma 2 immediately impressed me because it's still a detailed and clean sound, but it's significantly smoother and warmer than either of the other two. Smoother might be the wrong term because the Blessing 3 is still very smooth, very refined, as I said before, a bit polite. But what you're getting in the case of the Yuma 2 is a sound where it's got a bit more bass presence because there's more extension, it doesn't roll off as much, and that helps to keep everything really nicely in balance. Interestingly, it still doesn't have quite the same sense of punch that the Blessing 3 has. You still feel more bass from the Blessing 3, but the overall level of bass in terms of the, the frequency response is that there's less, if that makes sense. So there's more presence and more body in the bass from the Yuma 2, but not quite the same level of impact as the Blessing 3. To put that into context with those tracks I used before, and I wish I could go traveling, the other thing that stood out to me was that the separation from the Yuma 2 is still excellent. You're getting a beautiful sense of separation of all the different sounds. The staging is excellent once again. I think for a $200 IEM, they're doing a wonderful job there. And the real standout for me is that tonally, I think they're the most accurate of the three. Because they've got that fairly consistent and linear progression down into the bass, everything sounds like it should. The guitar has the resonance on the body, but the vocal still has the clarity and the air and the texture, so everything just sounds natural, everything just sounds right. I think the trade-off that you get there is that with the Yuma 2, you can't quite focus in on the vocals the way you can with something like the Blessing 3, but it's a small trade-off in my opinion for an overall more natural sound. And this goes back to what I said before, if you're looking for an IEM specifically to focus on vocals and treble and that sort of detail in that area, then both the Orchestra Light and the Blessing 3 are excellent, but if you're after more of a tonally accurate experience, I think the Yuma 2 is the choice. Moving over to the Handler, as I said before, the bass presence from the Yuma 2, in my opinion, is better, it's more accurate and more natural to what it would sound like in real life. And the only thing lacking for me was that I would have liked just a little bit more impact, a bit more feeling from the bass, a bit more punch, you could call it, that the Yuma 2s don't have so much. But it's a very minor gripe, and it's only because the Blessing 3 is so good in that regard that I felt like I wanted more from the Yuma 2. Having said that, I would take the level of bass, the presence of the bass from the Yuma 2 every day because it's more important for me at least, it's more important tonally to get that right than to have that tactility without the tonal balance. From the Yuma 2, the vocal on this track and the snares on this track were once again very well controlled. And I feel like the tonality, the delivery and the character of the treble and the upper mid-range, I think from the Yuma 2, it's more like the Blessing 3. I think it's doing a better job of focusing the vocals, giving a good sense of clarity, but smoothness and control. I think the Yuma 2 is much more similar to the Blessing 3 because the orchestra light does still have that little tiny bit of edginess that occasionally just got a bit too harsh for me. It's very minor, but it's what separates these three in terms of putting the orchestra light in a 1B position to the 1A of the Blessing 3 and the Yuma 2. The separation of the Yuma 2s was still excellent as it was on the previous track, and I think in that regard they're getting very, very close, maybe as good as what I was hearing from the Blessing 3. And so the Yuma 2s still weren't quite perfect on a track like The Handler, 
but they're definitely of these three the best of the bunch. So if you're into rock and soul and blues and funk and all those different sounds and styles that need that energy and that drive, the presence in the bass from the Yuma 2s makes them the best choice here. And the good news is that you're not trading off other qualities, you're not losing out on clarity, separation, technicalities. It's got all of that covered, but also the bass presence that you need. And so at this point, I was really torn. There were things I loved about the Blessing 3, but I also really appreciated the Yuma 2, particularly for $120 less than the Blessing 3. And so I decided to run a tiebreaker. I played through a few different tracks, and one of the ones I landed on was Matilda by Harry Belafonte. This is a live recording. It's a great recording, even though it's an old recording. And so I ran through listening to the Yuma 2. I did also try briefly the Orchestra Light, but most of my time was with the Blessing 3 versus the Yuma 2. The first thing I noticed was just how good the imaging and spacing was. This is a live recording, as I mentioned before, and you get a wonderful sense of ambience and space when listening to it. The Yuma 2s captured that really, really well. Tonally, once again, the Yumas were very strong because of that very balanced tonality, that balanced frequency response. And whilst the sound was generally all kind of inside the head, they don't throw sound outside the head at all, but at the same time, the sense of ambience and space was still excellent. Ultimately, what I wrote in my notes was that the Yuma 2 sounds just right. I've listened to this track and this album across a bunch of different systems, and from a tonal point of view, and just a general listening point of view, it sounded as good as I would expect, maybe even better than I'd expect, from a $200 IEM. Moving that over to the Blessing 3, and speaking comparatively only, the Blessing 3 was just a little bit fatiguing in its tonality. I don't mean it's a fatiguing IEM, it's definitely not. It's incredibly refined, as I said before, almost too polite. But at the same time, I felt coming from the lovely tonal balance of the Yuma 2, the slightly brighter, more kind of lean, leaning of the Blessing 3 just made it a bit less enjoyable and therefore a touch more fatiguing on this track. As you'd expect from what I've said earlier, the sense of space and ambience is still excellent from the Blessing 3. And whilst the tonality overall is a bit less natural, it did help me to focus in more on Harry Belafonte's vocals. Having said that, the lack of weight in the bass which helps you to focus on the vocals from the Blessing 3, that came back to bite a little bit because sounds like the guitar and the bass were just a little bit disembodied and therefore felt a bit recessed or a bit distant. With the Yuma 2, everything sounded right, it sounded present in the mix, it sounded natural, like you were there in the auditorium. Whereas in the case of the Blessing 3, it didn't sound as natural. It really focused you on the fact that you're listening to a recording, it helped you pick out the vocal, but not kind of get immersed and lost in the overall music. And so personally, after going back and forth on this for a while, I do think the Yuma 2 is actually the best IEM of these three. It's going to come down partly to what you're looking for, but if it was up to me with my money on the table, I'd be wanting to spend 200 bucks on the Yuma 2 and save the 120 to spend elsewhere. Because I think you're getting better tonal balance from the Yuma 2, which is going to translate to a better experience across a wider range of genres. And so I really think the Orchestra Light and the Blessing 3 probably only make sense if you're after them for a very specific purpose. But before we wrap things up there, there was one final test that I had to consider, and that was to put the Yuma 2 up against another IEM, one that I love in this same price bracket, and that was the T-Audio Elixir. Coming in at just $209, US the Elixir is my absolute go-to in this price bracket because I just think it's one of the best sounding IEMs anywhere up to about $300 or $400 going back through the tracks that we've already talked about, and the T-Audio Elixir reminded me once again just why I love it so much. For the price you're paying, their sense of articulation and clarity throughout I Wish I Could Go Travelling was just fantastic. The bass from the Elixirs has the presence of the Yuma 2, so it's got that body that the Yuma 2 has, but it's also got the punch that the Blessing 3 has, or maybe even a little bit more. So there's a wonderful combination of a, a well-balanced bass, they're not overly enhanced, but a very tactile, very punchy and present bass. They do have a bit of a treble peak, which probably makes them a little bit crisper at times than any of the other three here, but I find them very well controlled. Now this is going to depend a little bit on where your specific treble frequencies lie in your hearing. We all have a slightly different kind of set of sensitivities depending on the shape and the length of our ear canals. But I certainly find the elixirs to manage that peak very, very well so that they do have a bit of extra energy and attack in the treble, but it's very well controlled and never harsh. I mentioned earlier when listening to The Handler by Muse that none of these other three IEMs could quite manage to bring everything together and give me the energy and the force and the excitement that I wanted from the bass all the way through the treble. And that's where the elixir did come to play. 
it was just better because it does balance that punchy bass that the Blessing 3 has with a bit more energy and drive in the treble, and that for me made it the best experience of all of them across all the tracks I tried. And so I think to sum this up, if you're looking for an IEM that's going to help you focus in on vocals and treble details, but not punish you with them either, then I think the Blessing 3 is the best choice here, but I also think the Orchestra Light is a very, very close runner-up for 70 odd US dollars less. So I think both offer a fantastic experience and a fantastic opportunity price-wise if you're looking for that sort of vocal and treble-focused IEM. If you're looking for a more tonally balanced IEM and you're looking at one of these three, then I do think the Yuma 2 is also excellent. But if you're going to be spending about $200, US I still think the T-Audio Elixir is the best bet. It's probably not quite as attractive or even quite as compact and therefore maybe not as comfortable as the Yuma 2, but it's plenty comfortable enough. And if you don't like the look of it, you don't have to once it's in your ears, you can't see it anyway. And I think for $209, US the Elixir is delivering easily, for me at least, the best sound of this bunch. But you can't go wrong with any of these four, so hopefully I've helped you narrow down your search for your next IEM in that sort of 200 to 320 US dollar range. And as always, if you found the video useful, helpful, or informative, please hit the like button, and also hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. But for now, let me leave it to the music, so happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. Passion for Sound.